What's up guys, welcome back to today's brand new video and today we're going to talk about why I switched over to DaVinci Resolve after about seven years of using Adobe Suite. Let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, yes, that is my microphone you're seeing. I'm trying this new look. Um, to get some more depth of field, make everything look a bit nicer with the setup and stuff. And there was no real way for me to mount this microphone out of frame. Firstly, it's going to be the most obvious reason and that is pricing. At this current point in time, if you look on DaVinci's website, they're actually quite nice. They give you your result in Rand, which is what we use here in South Africa. And currently it's going for 6,150 Rand. And you might be like, Gosh, that's a lot. But, but, important. If you go to Adobe site and you go look at pricing, you are paying around $52.99 a month, which is, bring up the calculator, 52.99. And I think right now the Rand dollar exchange is about 19. So that will give you 1,006 Rand every month deducted from your bank account. And you might be like, wow, well, yeah, it's Adobe, it's famous. So with DaVinci, you get 6,150 once off, forever. You pay that once, you've got lifetime updates, where with Adobe, you pay that in about six months and you still have a program that crashes and yeah, we'll get into that. All right, now that we've got pricing out of the way, the next thing for me is project databases versus project files. So if you're working with Adobe's suite like Premiere Pro and After Effects, you have what is essentially known as project files, which you create, which is this little file that gets stored along with either inside your project bin where all your footage is, or you could store it somewhere else, but you've got all these little files that's stored over like various locations. And if you need to work on a project that was stored on an external hard drive and you just forgot the drive, then you pretty much buggered. Whereas in DaVinci Resolve, you have project databases. So you can save a database on a drive on your computer, or you could even save a database on a NAS server somewhere in your house or somewhere. But what DaVinci actually does is in its database, as you can see right here, you can make various databases, you know, to sort your stuff. I've personally sorted mine through CP database, which is my company, uh, Sinusure Productions. And then I have uh, YouTube, I think it's called, or YT videos or something that's for my YouTube videos. And then if you click on those databases, all your project files are stored in that database. So you never need to search for project files when working on projects, etc. Thirdly would be node based color grading and effects versus adjustment layers. So if you've been working in Premiere Pro and you have experience in either Premiere or After Effects, you would know that you can do color grading on a clip, but only to a certain extent, then you'd have to make an adjustment layer and another one and another one. And that just like fills up your timeline and it looks really, really bad where if you're working in DaVinci Resolve and it's kind of the same thing, but not really. So in DaVinci Resolve, as you can see here, you have your video, which you're editing, and then you have a node. And then on each node is basically like an adjustment layer. However, it allows you to do so much more when it comes to color grading, when it comes to applying effects. I could literally apply a LUT, which we'll talk about in a bit, only to someone's face and keep the rest of the scene clean. Whereas in Premiere, that's not really possible unless you do like adjustment layers, adjustment layers, adjustment layers, where in DaVinci, you make a node, do something, make another node, do something. So a node is basically like a layer, but it's hidden inside of your video and that keeps the timeline clean and makes your whole process of working and editing so much quicker because your computer doesn't have to constantly run through those adjustment layers on your timeline and we all know that a big timeline slows down your computer no matter how fast it is number four would be speed and we just talked about this in the previous discussion or the previous topic but adobe suite runs mostly off of your cpu and about 20 to 30 percent off of your gpu so 
where in a case where I take a 4K ProRes file or DNxHR file, let's say it's 30 seconds and I render that clip in Premiere Pro, it would take me roughly about a minute and a half, two minutes to render. However, in DaVinci Resolve, that same clip with the same LUT applied to it took about, I think, 38 seconds to render. And that is because DaVinci Resolve is like almost 100% GPU based. So if you have an extremely strong graphics card, it's just gonna run so much faster than relying to, on your CPU with only a couple cores to like do all the rendering and processing. If you guys want to see me do a render test between Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve Studio, then I would gladly do so. Just give this video a like and leave it down in the comments, let me know, and then I'll add that to my list of videos that I want to make. The fifth thing would be LUT workflow. Now, if you're watching this video and you don't really know what a LUT is, a LUT is basically like a preset that you use on photos, but just for videos. So the LUT contains all the color and adjustment data that would be applied to your video. So right now you can see this is a log format shot video, but with my cutter grid on top, it gives you this studio look that you're seeing right now. So when it comes to working with LUTs in Adobe Suite, whenever you're working on a clip and you wanna put a LUT on that clip, you'd have to go click on the clip, go to your Lumetri tab or whatever, click on browse, search for your LUT wherever it's stored or saved, and then click on that and then click apply. But in DaVinci Resolve, as you can see right here, it's almost like a LUT database. So you could just simply right click, open folder location, drag in your own LUTs or LUTs you've downloaded, whatever, doesn't matter. And then no matter what project you're working on in DaVinci, it's all laying right there. And another thing that I would like to, to mention when it comes to like working with LUTs is that in Premiere, if you wanted to create your own type of LUT, you'd have to shoot your clip and then take like a screenshot of the clip, take that screenshot to either Lightroom or Photoshop and then grade that screenshot from your clip. You then have to save those presets or those settings. You have to copy that to a certain like square file that you would put into a program to convert that picture to a cube file, which you would then have to import back into Premiere. And it doesn't even always look that great because you edited a JPEG screenshot still and you're applying it to footage. However, in DaVinci Resolve, if I do a grade, I can simply right click on the clip, save LUT, make a folder or save it to whatever folders I have. Um, but as you can see, it's just so much easier. You've got everything in one place, no matter what project you're working on. Tip number six would be four programs in one. So if you're familiar with the Adobe Suite, you'd know that you have Premiere Pro for basic editing. If you wanted to do any special effects, super slow-mo with software, do motion tracking and thing, you'd have to go over to Adobe After Effects, which is program number two. And then if you wanted to do like any special like audio effects, do like, you'd have to go over to another program from Adobe called Audition. And then if you have multiple projects that are lined up that you just wanna like leave your computer to render and export, you'd have to go to the fourth program, which is Adobe Media Encoder. However, in DaVinci Resolve, those four programs are just one program and they're all just split across tabs. So in DaVinci Resolve, you have the edit tab, which is where you do all your cuts and edits and stuff, you know, do timeline work. And then to cut a grade, I just go to the color tab, which is part of the editing. If I wanna do special effects, I simply go to the Fusion tab. If I wanna do audio effects, I simply go to Fairlight, I think they call it. That is their audio suite, which is obviously built into the program. And if I wanna render a bunch of projects, I just go to Deliver. And there I could line up Render Queue, Render Queue, Render Queue, just line up a ton of projects and just click Render and it does it. So this concludes my six reasons, well, my six biggest reasons why I switched to DaVinci Resolve. And I hope this has helped you. If you'd like more videos about DaVinci Resolve, please leave a comment down below or send me a DM on Instagram. I'll be more than happy to answer that. Good luck with quarantine. I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace.